Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm just going to let you all know now, we're just going to stay on verse one today. Um, I may read a, a couple other verses, but I don't think we're going to get past verse one. Um, let's see. I do ask that you all keep me in prayer. I go to get my second vaccine today and my body does not do well with any vaccine. I always have a reaction. And I know that they say the second one is worse than the first one. And the first one, my mouth swole up. And so I know God is faithful. Hey, if I go see his face today, I'm cool with that. No bills to pay. Hey, no body aches. I'm cool with that. I love y'all. Um, but if I if I don't go see him today, I just don't want to be in a whole lot of pain um, and discomfort, right? All right. Hello. Uh, not hello. Well, we can say hello to you, God. We always should say hello to you. I mean, when we wake up in the morning, but um, good morning, Father. We just thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that you are a God who sits high, Lord God, but you are so personable, Lord God. You want a personal relationship with each one of us, Lord God. Lord, we revere you. We fear you, Lord God. We know that you are the Alpha and Omega, Lord God. We know that you are the creator of all things, Father. But we also know that we're your sons and daughters and we call you Abba Father. So we just thank you and praise you for that. Ask that you would be with my tongue, Lord God, as I um, bring forth your word and things about your word on this day, Lord God. And that you would just watch over us all, Lord God, and have us to, to be attentive, Lord God, have ears to hear, Lord, what it is the Spirit is saying. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I um, want to say happy Mother's Day um, to all of the mothers out there. And I actually want to start before we go to Acts chapter 6. I want to go to John, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 19 and read verses 25 through 27. And they read as follows. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. All right. So it has been concluded by um, theologians, everybody else, and um, those who've written the other gospels that John was this disciple whom Jesus loved. Right. Um, and John never mentions him, his own name in the book of John. All right. So he always talks about the disciple whom he loved and things like that. So and Jesus is looking down from the cross and John and his mother are there and Jesus knows that he's going away, but he wants to make sure that his mother is taken care of. And so he looks at his mom and he's like, this is the one that's going to do it. And he looks at John and he was like, you're the one that's going to do it. And so I wanted to go ahead and bring that up because today we sell or not today, but Sunday we celebrate Mother's Day. You know, you should always honor your mother. Um, I can tell you that for a fact because mine has been gone 21 years and there are days where I wish I could honor her. I, there are days I wish she would argue with me or, or tell me things I didn't want to hear or whatever, just to hear her voice and just to hear her laugh. But I wanted to um, to read this because you don't have to have birthed the person in order for you to be um, their son or you don't have to have birthed the person in order for you to be their mother. And you, the person doesn't have to be birthed by you in order for them to be your son or a daughter. All right. So um, like my sister has two lifelong friends. They've been friends since I don't know five years old or something and they're well into their 60s no um so they're getting ready to hit 50 um and the mothers of these two ladies you know why net my sister she should honor them because they helped raise her you know when why net would go over to their homes um, they had the right to discipline Wynette, just like when they came over to our home, my mom, you know, had the right to discipline them. So just wanted to say happy Mother's Day to you, whether you birthed the child or whether you just had a hand in raising the child. All right.
All right, so let's go ahead and go back to Acts chapter 6. We're going to read verse 1. I'm not going to read the other ones just yet. If we get to the other ones, great. Um, but let's go back to verse 1. And in those days, <clears throat> when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. When I finished this yesterday, I thought I was finished. But I was trying to tell you all who was a Hebrew and who was not and all of that. And so I want to tell you all that and then some other things. All right. And so let's go ahead and start out. out. So Abraham was a Hebrew. All right. If we read Genesis chapter 14 verse 13 it says and there came one that had escaped and told abram the hebrew all right so this is before abraham's name was changed all right so he was abram at first his wife was sarai at first god changed their name to abraham and sarah so before then it tells you in genesis chapter 14 verse 13 that abraham was a hebrew all right so if abraham is a hebrew he has two sons he has one by his wife and one by hagar okay the one by hagar um, that child's name is Ishmael. The one by Sarah, the child's name is Isaac. All right. And so they would both be Hebrews as well. All right. That's the end of Ishmael. Ishmael, all of his descendants, all Hebrews. Okay. Let's go to Isaac. Isaac is a Hebrew. He's not an Israelite. All right. He's a Hebrew. Abraham's a Hebrew. Isaac is a Hebrew. Isaac has um, two. Isaac has twelve sons. All right. <clears throat> Isaac has um, the tribe. No, Isaac has two sons, Esau and Jacob. Let me reverse. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. So Abraham has two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Isaac has two sons. They're twins, Jacob and Esau. All right. Esau and his family they would be Hebrews, okay? Jacob, God changes his name, which meant trickster to Israel, all right? So when God changed Jacob, Jacob's name to Israel, that's where the Israelites come from, okay? So Jacob is an Israelite, all right? Because God changes his name. So anybody born to Jacob, is an Israelite, all right? And so they're Israelites. And then where does the term Jew come from? Jew came from one of Israel's sons, um, which was Judah. That was what they called them, Jews, all right? But today we're like, oh, that's a Jew, that's a Jew, that's a Jew, all right? Are they from the tribe of Judah? Not necessarily. Why? Because these 12 children that Israel or Jacob had. Um, they end up going into the promised land, but they end up having a divided kingdom. Kingdom, Okay, I think Jeroboam was the one that divided the kingdom. So they have a divided kingdom and there are 10 tribes up north and two tribes down south, okay? And so the 10 tribes up north they end up getting captured by the Assyrians. And so um, when they get captured by the Assyrians and go off, then everybody after that becomes or um, is called a Jew. All right. So before then, it was simply the tribe of Judah that was considered Jews. But once the Assyrians captured the northern kingdom, and then they just started calling all Israelites Jews. All right. All right. So that's how that goes. Now, what else are we talking about here in Acts chapter six? We are talking about. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. All right, we talked about the Grecians being Jews, 
So Israelites, Jews that were born in other lands, but spoke Greek. Okay. So these Hebrews are the ones who actually spoke the original language. Let's talk about this original language. All right. So Hebrew is the original language of Abraham when he goes off. What do I mean by that? Let's go back to Genesis and let's go to Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. It says, And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Okay. Originally, Abram and his daddy lived in Ur of the Chaldees. His dad takes them away from there. All right. And Ur of the Chaldees, their language was Aramaic. When Ur, I mean, when um, Haran take, or Terah takes them away from Ur of the Chaldees, then they begin creating a new language. Okay. So that's how you get Abram the Hebrew. Okay. So they start speaking Hebrew. But don't forget that Abram would have known some Aramaic because that's where he was initially raised before they left. All right. Let's 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 keep this together. All right. So um the original language that Abram knew was Aramaic. His daddy takes them away. They start developing this other language that is called Hebrew. And it's just an offshoot, I guess I want to say. Um, you know how they do in the South. Some things that people say, you're like, what in the world? When you come from up North, you're like, what is that? You know, you can take something even simple as go down South and they ask you for soda. Like, okay, what's a soda? Up north, we call it a pop, right? Um, and so just different things like that. But let's go ahead and keep going. So, um, so Abram, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israelites, what have you, they're all speaking Hebrew, right? Until, remember I told you about that divided kingdom, the 10 and the two? Okay, so the southern kingdom ended up being captured as well. They were captured by the Babylonians. And when the Babylonians took them away, this is what we have. We have in Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 through 6, it says, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning. I can't believe this time and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace in whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. OK, give me a little bit more time today, please. Um, and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Okay, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's, what, that's who these are, plus Daniel. All right, so they know Hebrew, but when they take them to Babylon, they want them to learn the language or the tongue of the Chaldeans. That's where Abram was originally from, Ur of the Chaldees. So they're trying to teach them really their native tongue from their great, great granddaddy and all that stuff, right? Okay, so when they become captured, then they go ahead and they learn 
Aramaic. Now, what happens? The land was supposed to have rest. If you look at Leviticus chapter 25, verses 2 through 7, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard and gather in the fruit. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. And it keeps going, but for sake of time, basically they were supposed to go into Canaan, sow and reap for six years, let the land rest. They decided at one point they weren't going to let the land rest. Well, it was about 10 Sabbaths that they missed. And that's why they're carried off to Babylon for 70 years. Because God is like, oh, my land is going to get the rest that it was supposed to get. So while they're in Babylon for these 70 years, the Hebrew language dies off because they're all speaking Aramaic now. Okay. So if we go to, um, oh, I don't have it written down. If we go to Nehemiah, um, like chapter eight and eight, I think it is, then you'll see that when they came back, they were actually um, reading the book of the law, which is the Pentateuch or the book of Moses, which is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They were reading that, but they needed an interpreter because they couldn't understand the Hebrew language that it was written in because for 70 years, all they started talking was Aramaic. Okay. So, um, just wanted to give you all the, the backstory of these Grecians and um the hebrews and and how all of this came to be all right monday we should start um chapter uh, six verse two um if the lord don't take me home from this COVID vaccine then hey i'll be here to start it if he does take me home hey somebody else on facebook y'all go ahead and and pick up with acts chapter um, six verse two all right Truly, I love y'all. Um, Lord willing, I will be here on Monday. And again, happy Mother's Day. Let's go ahead and close out. Heavenly Father, just thank you and praise you for who you are, Lord God. I thank you for the comfort that I have in knowing, Lord God, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Father, I just thank you and and um, praise you for that because of just the, the different killings and, and all of this stuff, Lord God. You're not safe anywhere. And so I just thank you and praise you for that, Lord God. And I pray that if there's anybody that ever hears this video, Lord God, that is not your child and wants to know about salvation, Father, that you would place somebody in their pathway to be able to lead them unto you, Lord God. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for the backstory in your word, Lord God, that tells us all about, Father, whatever it is that you have in your word, Lord. We're able to go and confirm it, Lord God, and just thank you and praise you for the lives that were lost, Lord God, just so we can be able to search the scriptures, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for telling us to study to show ourselves approved unto you, Lord God, rightly dividing the word of truth, Lord God. We ask that you continue to be with us, Lord God, be with us throughout this weekend. Father, allow the mothers to have an amazing Mother's Day, Lord God, and bring us back on my third grandchild's birthday, Lord God, when he turns one. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See y'all later. Yeah. <clears throat>